and welcome back to another episode of our adaptation series. The series that will literally never run out of content since I swear each video will unearth a whole new list of upcoming films because originality is dead in the western world. Starting off on a positive note, eh? Well, it's only to get worse from here on as the greedy, unplanned and dead-eyed reach of Hollywood executives have only expanded further to no longer even be on one side of the pond anymore. The western world may be as unoriginal as heck these days, but that doesn't mean they're limited to recycling just western stories anymore. Cause of course there's the whole underground gold mine that is the anime scene. Now I've made a couple anime videos in the past, but I've been wanting to make more this year. And what better way to go about doing it than through all those dreadful live action attempts that I'll bless your screen with sometime in the future. And today when we cover the upcoming production of one of the more accessible new anime to hit screens across the world, I am of course talking about One Punch Man. One of only two anime shows I have ever witnessed to successfully convert a normie viewer into watching anime, the other being Fruits Basket, the remake. Even still, yes, One Punch Man is getting a live action adaptation, and it's not simply another Netflix release. Instead, there's a bit of a rumble going on between the big three studios of the superhero genre in Hollywood right now. Marvel, of course, being the currently winning powerhouse, obtaining not just a functional cinematic universe, but also now being able to flex their reach after consuming Fox and their associated IPs like Fantastic Four and you know, X-Men and that kind of thing. And while Warner Brothers isn't quite on their level, they still somewhat solidly hold onto the DC universe, if only they could formulate it better. And even then, I mean, they're making some serious strides at least this year to like just kind of throw everything at the wall, aren't they? But in the middle of these two opposing forces is an awkward, feeble little guy who's not actually small at all and actually one of the biggest media companies in the world, but even still, from a superhero front, they cling on to just a single IP pretty much, and even then they have a joint agreement with Marvel for that singular IP. Hosting just friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and trying to build on it somewhat with Venom, there's Sony, struggling to make a major name for themselves against the biggest trend in our current movie landscape. And these lot are in desperate need for another franchise to bulk out their library. Sure, Spider-Verse is great, but I mean, we need more than Spider-Man, you know? Enter the anime world. What could possibly go wrong? Anime has notoriously flopped when taken to the Western world, especially in the form of a live action take. I mean, there's a damn long list of shows that were tarnished through this processing. Dragon Ball, Ghost in the Shell, Death Note, Attack on Titan. Can't wait for it to happen to all the other giants, cause I kid you not, out there in various stages of productions is a Naruto adaptation, Akira adaptation, Cowboy B, Bebop, Sword Art Online, The Promised Neverland, Steins Gate, there's a One Piece one, and there's a Sailor Moon adaptation, everything is for sale! But while we've got all year to touch on some of these, what with delays galore giving us plenty of time anyway, we'll just today focus on One Punch Man, as there's a good few amount of details to touch on, especially with its actual fit in our western superhero bubble. Plus, you know, it's one of the earlier productions being made, kind of. So Sony Pictures has taken the bait and full on plans to make this an entire franchise. It's not just a one off film. Okay, let's hear some of the good news in regards to the people that actually got casted into the crew. First off, there's Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pinkner as the writers for the film. Recently known for the works on Venom, of course, as well as previously the two Jumanji films from the both of them, as well as as executive producers to Cowboy Bebop the miniseries, another one of the productions being made in the company. Sony are really pulling on their anime cards, aren't they? Pinkner also did writing work on Lost, which is definitely a good sign, as well as The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which isn't a bad extra accolade, I guess. Yeah. Clearly, they're the duo for the anime front and know a thing or two about their superheroes already. In fact, both hero films have a good display of comedy, which will certainly be a vital part to how successful this One Punch Man adaptation can be. So based on just that alone, overall, the two don't paint too bad a picture. Maybe this could actually be the first step in a genuinely good adaptation. But let's not get our hopes up just yet, because do you realize how rare it is for a live action anime to actually work over here? But hey, we've got plenty of other details, so maybe it will help us focus our idea of where this is going. So. Moving on, we've got our producers, Avi and Ari Arad, under the Arad Productions company. 
the father and son duo are absolute powerhouses in the industry. I mean, RV the dad is the CEO and founder of Marvel, working on everything. X-Men, Spider-Man, the 90s TV shows, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Venom, Spider-Verse. His son too, working on the original Iron Man and together on Ghost in the Shell. Oh. Oh no. So, they may know their western superhero stuff, but that, that's a dodgy start. Nowadays, they're working on all sorts of other adaptations. The son Ari has Uncharted, Borderlands, and Metal Gear Solid under his belt, and Ari's going ahead with those, as well as Naruto and Morbius and Spider-Verse 2. So sometimes anime-y, but mostly just outright video game stuff. And they're certainly versed with the adaptations of Western comic books. Which brings up an interesting point. Obviously, they've already taken a first stab and missed with Ghost in the Shell, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're doomed right off the bat. If anything, perhaps they've learned the most from the missed opportunity, granting them better odds on the second try as opposed to having someone else do the work and then making the same mistakes for the first time, you know? Because One Punch Man and any manga adaptation really requires an entirely different approach than the standard Marvel formula of the last couple of decades. One Punch Man is not your standard Western superhero. Obviously, right? Any American influences are completely omitted, not to mention it is pretty starkly parodious. It's a comedy, making fun not of Western approaches to superheroing, but as a satirical approach to classic tokusatsu tropes, i.e. the style of live action shows in Japan. Power Rangers, Godzilla, Kamen Rider, that kind of thing. Deadpool, at least, is the closest reference there in being a parody of Western tropes, but it's still very far off the mark. And the tropes One Punch Man makes fun of aren't necessarily understood internationally. Already, that's a massive hurdle to have to overcome. Accessibility. Something it does have on its side, though, is the mirrored theming of tackling superhero fatigue that's beginning to set in with audiences worldwide. We've all been exposed to this for over a decade now, so the change of formula is what potentially works across borders. But there's just so many other issues that'll need to be addressed first. I mean, even the nature of adapting book material is vastly different between Western comics and Eastern manga. Over here, it's become common practice to warp the source material into something in its own field. Drastically different, just borrowing the same general direction. Plus, you know, it avoids the spoilers. Whereas for a manga adaptation, it's got to be dot to dot perfect as an imitation. I mean, the direction is practically already there in the visual designs of the manga, so no wonder, right? But then again, perhaps that's what the missing puzzle piece is to all of this. Maybe treating the source material as only a guideline, much like the Marvel comics, is the cure to allowing for a better final outcome. Having a Western live action adaptation feel more like a new dimensional take, or simply using the same cinematic universe while doing its own thing. The idea of fully westernizing the story for a western audience already, I know, sounds awfully blasphemous for hardcore manga fans. Of course, that, like, that makes sense. But it's a potential avenue that could make it all flow much more smoothly. It's, ironically, the Marvel approach. The world of One Punch Man is one populated with superheroes using their powers as part of a career path. And though the original focuses on a supercontinental Earth with all land masses merged, if it was reverted to our standard Earth map out, it could simply approach the originals as taking place only in Japan, whilst this new take focuses on the other side of the pond, just with the characters being based there instead, along with some influences and references. It'll garner hate, but would certainly run more smoothly than its predecessors, adding as merely a companion piece to the original rather than a poor imitation that could never hope to succeed it. It also allowed for them to keep the same theming, but open it up to our audiences, parodying Western audiences instead. Similar to how One Punch Man satirized long-running shonen anime like the other productions being made right now. However their production is done, every other approach will surely be done in the future anyway, with the just complete bombardment of executives wanting a new anime out here. But until they arrive, I'm here to take suggestions for future anime that you'd like to see covered in this adaptation series. Don't worry, the video's not over or anything, but if you are invested so far, then check me out in different places. I've got a busy Twitter, my Instagram exists, I'm talking on Discord right now, and you statistically still got a red button to press below the video. So do us a real one and I'll make sure more videos like this happen. It's a new lane for me here, anyway. 2D.
Anyway, let's get back to it. But okay, that's one speculative approach addressed. Let's go back to the production crew involved as there's more details we somewhat know. Now, as far as I can tell, the actual confirmations of director and star haven't actually been made, but there are aspirations, with several insider sources supposedly claiming that Sony is considering Chloe Zhao as director, a woman already awfully well known in the Marvel fandom for donning the task of the upcoming Eternals movie. In fact, while speaking about that project, she went on to say that she has such deep, strong manga roots that she's brought into Eternals, wanting to push more of that marriage of East and West, which certainly would make her the top pick for choosing to work on a project like One Punch Man, you know? And then there's the task of casting the starring role. You might have seen several mock-ups. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for example, keeps popping up in thumbnails. But we'd need someone kinda thin doofy, yet can pull off both of Saitama's signature looks. And though there are some pretty good fan pieces out there or out on the internet somewhere, one source claimed that Sony was eyeing the star of Crazy Rich Asians, Henry Golding, as their lead pick, previously appearing in Last Christmas as well as currently working on the G.I. Joe spin-off film Snake Eyes as Snake Eyes. Huh. But while the correct cast and crew are an obvious hurdle to have to get right, one of the biggest issues that will face this production is just how to visually do the source material justice, and actually maintaining the feel of the show. Somehow keeping up with the level of animation that sets the bar for the entire franchise. I mean, even within the anime lane, a lot of steam for the series was lost in the second season once it downgraded animation studios for something more simplistic. In addition to that, the plot of season two took the more generic plot point of having equally strong superheroes clashing against each other rather than the subversive foundation of One Punch Man that would showcase a more slice of life overpowered comedy approach. That was Saitama's perspective, essentially leaning into what caused the superhero fatigue in the first place that it was trying to stand out against. And also though, how would the plot even fit into two hours? Would it tackle a small element of the early days of the series, crush an entire season into an undeveloped runtime or take an entirely different spin-off approach. The running theme for these anime shows are that they're all disastrous, but if Big Wig Sony is planning to invest in this being their side hustle niche, then maybe it'll actually be more conceptually thought out. There are rare examples of adapting nicely in places. Maybe this project could end up looking a little like Scott Pilgrim with its direct nod to comic paneling that we've already seen in the likes of Spider-Verse, as well as the comic book Onomatopoeia that would probably be more fitting with some kind of like JoJo adaptation, but I'm sure wouldn't be amiss with most manga adaptations anyway. Or perhaps it could take on the successful approach of Alita Battle Angel. Sony of all people would certainly have to budget to invest in some CGI everywhere and could probably recreate the cities of One Punch Man if only it, you know, correctly used their budget and CGI. It's hard to tell which way this project will lean in regards to genuine success. Sometimes Sony can really strike gold and sometimes they really can't, so it's definitely a gamble. The people they have on board in their dreams or in reality only really highlight this further. Looking great in some places and questionable in others. One Punch Man has come an incredibly long way. Originally launching in 2009 as a webcomic from Japanese artist One, then in 2012 being moved to publisher Jump Next, teaming with artist Yusuke Murata for the godlike adaptation that followed, becoming an international hit as it was broadcast in anime form in 2015, and following up with an announcement on April 21st, 2020 as a Sony produced live action movie. And it's clear there are eggs in this basket, as the announcement came alongside the reveal of Venom 2, clearly hoping to direct attention to it from the more well-known name, in the Western world at least. This is Sony's step into becoming a unique superhero franchise brand, and though many hoops will have to be maneuvered to stand against the outlandish style of the animation from the East, with no set release date just yet and a whole lot of time to sit around and just, you know, think it through a little bit, Perhaps this too is cause for excitement as potentially the start of the floodgates to all sorts of good anime adaptations. Of course, if it flops, we're still going to be getting like every foundational anime ever bleeding out of the seams of the walls anyway. But we can at least hope that the film industry can do this right once out of like the 50 adaptations coming. 
Maybe by the time we get a My Hero Academia live action adaptation, it wouldn't be a guaranteed curse. Uh, it's already happening? Oh, okay, no, no, okay. Whew. It's not quite. Maybe in 2018 it supposedly was briefly, but no, no, I, I don't think it's still gonna happen. I mean, I'm absolutely certain, uh, you better believe it will... Like, it's definitely gonna happen at some point, but hopefully this new wave of anime content will bust through with a good formula uh, eventually. For now, we're just to wait for that upcoming Cowboy Bebop by the same people as this, and I'll go back to my ironic watch of Netflix's Mob Psycho 100 or something. Oh god. Next week, we're covering a series you've probably been keeping up with recently, as well as a bonus second upload on a cancelled fourth film entry. Let me know what other anime or manga you'd like to see me cover in the future, but otherwise, for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> the Western world's gonna get a whole lot more Japanesey.